Oh, well, good morning. Uh, it's been a while. I guess I did something in July. But um, today I'm going to start at like a three week. We're going to be talking about Judges. Really great book. I, I, I listened to some scholars say if he had, if somebody gave him a bigger eraser and said he could erase one book of the Bible, Judges is what he would erase. <laughs> anyway, uh, I was also, I was driving, driving this morning, I was listening to Dennis Prager. Uh, for those of you who know Dennis Prager, but it was a, it was a program. He just, he puts out these, he's Jewish, and he puts out these commentaries. He just put out one on, not very long ago, on Deuteronomy. And he was talking about being in college. And when he was in college, uh, I think working on his PhD, he was wondering why these smart professors were so stupid. <laughs> and he was trying to, and he said, he, as Jewish, I don't know what the Jewish phrase was, came to his mind, but this is what it was. He said, the wisdom, wisdom begins with the fear of God. Amen. And they don't have that. And boy, that fits judges Amen. also. Okay, let's start with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you today so thankful for all that you give us. Thank you for this morning. Thank you for the cool weather. Uh, bless this uh, message, and uh, may, it, may it enlighten and tweak your mind to think about things. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Okay, so like I said, we're going to be talking about Judges, and over the uh, next three weeks, we're going to be basically uh, today. We're going to talk about the history leading up to Judges, and and then we'll do some overview stuff about Judges. We really won't get in heavy into the meat. We'll cover some today, but we won't get heavy into the meat until next week, because there's a lot of meat, bad meat, but it's a lot of meat in the Book of Judges. Uh, so today, we're gonna, I'm going to do a little introduction to judges, and uh, I'm going to talk, you know, because I like the history. So we have to talk, put it back, we have to put this all in perspective. So we'll talk about the, the history leading to the judges, and we'll touch on a lot of things that we've hit before. Chronology, genealogy, archaeology, we'll touch a little bit of each of those things. And as we go through the next Two weeks after today, we'll get into some of those things in quite a bit more detail. And then I'm going to end up with kind of an overview of the book, uh, which will kind of, it's kind of like the cliff notes for the next two weeks. Okay? Okay. So, so st starting back in the, here in the beginning, if we we'll remember Moses, led the Exodus, he, he and God chose his successor to be Joshua. You know, Joshua leads the Israelites into the promised land, and uh, they conquer the promised land. We'll talk about that a little bit more. A bit of a misnomer to say they conquered the promised land. Uh, but the Israelites settled in the promised land, and uh, Joshua divided the land between the 12 tribes, all right? So, and we'll talk about that. We'll go over that just a little bit more. Um, so, uh, though the, so even though the Israelites uh, moved into the promised land, uh, they really still continue to have a lot of conflict. Um, and I think it's because they didn't follow what God said, which God's told them to get rid of these Canaanites for reasons we'll talk about in a little bit. But there were a number of uh, groups there in that region, uh, some of which we, they, we generally call the Canaanites, and that's a term that's used in the Bible a lot. Um, generally, we're talking about Canaan being this region of, uh, of the ancient Near East, which we'll call Israel today. Um, but that was kind of Canaan in those days. And the Canaanites were people that lived in that area. But most of the Canaanite tribes or people groups were descendants of Cain, um, Noah's grandson. Okay, so, uh, but there were also other groups that weren't uh, Canaanites. They were nomadic groups like the Ammonites. And those were nomadic groups. 
Um, the Canaanites were a little more stable. And then there was a whole, there was a, the outsiders, which was the Philistines. Okay, all these people are going to play a major part in uh, the book of Judges. So the book of Judges covers about 300 years. Now, if you read stuff, scholars will say somewhere between 200, which is really pretty shaky, uh, to 400 years. Eh, 300, 300 plus years, maybe 350 years. But that's, that, that's about the time. It goes from the death of, jo uh, death of Joshua until the anointing of Saul as king. So that's the period or the era that we, uh, we call the judges, okay? Um, so the, the term judges, when we hear the term judges, we think a courtroom. Yeah, they, had, they had a role, Most of them had some, some of them had a role as a judge, but they were, they were the, the, the Hebrew word really means uh, savior or deliverer. And as we'll talk about later, it's best to think of the judges kind of as uh, tribal chiefs. Um, they were leaders, but military, political, whatever. Um, uh, let's see. Um, so, uh, 12 judges that they're going to, we'll talk about up to the time of Samuel. I think I mentioned this later, but... There really are, um, depends on how you count them. There's 12 judges. Maybe there's 13 judges if you count Deborah and Barak. You know, uh, so one woman, 12 men. Uh, then some people call, count some other people, Samuel, Eli, as judges. But so basically we're talking about those things. Um, I... I for this period of history, the book of Judges is the most definitive history that there is out there for this 300-year period. There really isn't a lot of stuff. We'll talk about some archaeology and stuff a little later, but uh, this, is the, this is history, well-written history. Um, and uh, I believe it's complete and accurate, okay? But... Um, uh, it, it's kind of this, this tragic tale of uh, Israel and its moral corruption. I mean, it just, the, <clears throat> they have bad leadership. I mean, they they are they be like I say they 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 start to become more like Canaanites than Israelites. They really they had no leader and they really fall to pieces in my in my opinion um, throughout the book for sure and I think throughout the Bible but throughout the book um, there's this pattern cyclical pattern that happens sin oppression uh, repentance deliverance and then peace so we have all these judges and and the, the, these cases will happen where you know they're they fall into subjugation of, of the people, and it just gradually, till, till God raises up a savior, a judge, to take them out of this, pro things get solved, kind of. Then they go into a period of peace, and then it starts all over again. So it's very repetitive. Uh, so like I said, the pattern is throughout the book, and uh, I'd like to give a warning. I, I wonder... Pastor, how did you get through this book in college? I mean, this is a bloody book. You know, it's like you shouldn't you shouldn't let your children read the book of Judges. It is bloody and very violent and very disturbing. Okay, so enough said about that kind of intro to it. So I like to. Um, do what I always do with this chart. So we're, we're, this is the kind of the timeline. So we're about, you know, over here where it says uh, conquest and, and the judges. So that's the timeline where we are now. We've had, we've had uh, classes about things on both sides of this. 
Um, I want to show you, you know what, Charlie, I, I'm sorry. I got to get my pointer. I'm lost. No, I don't want to copy. OK, so also we got to think about, uh, I wanted to think about the timeline. So you know, we, we start out here at the time with Adam and Eve, 2,000 years about, we get down to Abraham, right? Um, so, uh, but of course, creation, we have uh, the flood and we have Babel. Babel, the dispersing of the people into very people groups throughout the country, uh, or throughout the world, excuse me. This particular one basically shows the lineage of Shem from Noah, but you got to remember Noah had two other sons, and they have a lineage also. And uh, but so this is important. It will it'll come to us again here. So I wanted to show you kind of a map of the area about the time of Abraham. So we know Abraham was born here in Ur. And God had him, told him to go to the promised land or to, to move with his family. And he migrates up through here, through the Mesopotamia, and then down into Canaan. You say, why did he go up and down? We've talked about this before, because you don't go across this stilly desert. So we don't do that. So that's, and these, these people groups, if you will, uh, become important as we go along. I'm going to quickly go through this timeline, only because we've done this before. But we've got this timeline from Abraham, and, and this particular thing I have shows you know, what's happening here, what's happening in, down in Egypt, and what's happening in other parts of the world. And you know, things move along. And I don't want to really spend too much time on that, other than to know that it did happen. So. We, we're here, we're the era of the judges, and I'll talk about in a little bit, well, before we quit, I'll mention Ruth, because the book of Ruth is right in the middle of the period of judges. In fact, uh, I think the original Hebrew Bible, Ruth was included in the book of Judges. I'm not sure when it got, came out. Do you know, Pastor, was it in the Septuagint? It was, at some point in time, it got separated. What's that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, so we have some, and I'm going to talk about a couple of things, Beneftestila and uh, our, the, uh, some archaeology. So we've got this whole period here. Um, but I want to talk about just a little bit about there was th some things going on at this period of time. It's really kind of important to understand. So we've talked about it before how Canaan, this is the, it's the a hub of commerce. This is the route up and down across. There was, it, was a very, it was a very important area for commerce of, the, of, of that time. So it was a very, if you will, valuable piece of real estate, you know, Israel, Canaan, about the size of California, I mean, basically. Uh, so it's, it was a pretty valuable piece of property. And people, uh, a, lot, a lot of other entities wanted to control that. So early on, we had the Hittites, and they, uh, they kind of crumbled a little before this. But they, were, they had become a very powerful empire kind of north of Canaan and um, there's still remnants of them as we get into the period of judges but uh, I point them out because his historians scholars for many 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 years said the Bible screwed up it's wrong Hittites never existed since then they've unearthed massive Hittite cities and you know, so a lot of things have happened okay Egypt Egypt was a uh, powerful nation, and it kind of waned. Certainly at the Exodus, they were weakened significantly. Uh, and I think there's things in history that 
that, that, that kind of substantiate that that happened. But they were constantly going up and either conquering, usually just taking control of various Canaanite people groups, city-states, whatever you want to call them. And those, those, those uh, city-states became vassals of, of Egypt, uh, meaning they paid tribute, they paid taxes, and uh, they were under the general protection of, but they were pretty much autonomous. But th that, that was very important. So it was happening a lot. Uh, at the time of judges, not much. I mean, there were things going on, and there's some document. There's the Amonar uh, letters, which are we discovered in Egypt. This massive uh, clay tablets, little tablets that were kind of like diplomatic correspondence with the various people groups all over that Egypt had control of, which really show that there, you know, that number one these vassal states existed and that the Israelites were there at that time. And um, th those, those letters kind of show these people groups are telling the Pharaoh or Egypt that they were having some issues, but I think it's very significant that Egypt didn't take action because I think they're pretty weak at this time. But, uh, and then there's the Meneftestila, another a document which a major uh, archaeological find that was uncovered that sh that on this big old tombstone, if you will, <laughs> large stone, they talk about Israel. First time, I think until recently, the first time that or the oldest mention of Israel on any archaeological find. It was the first time it mentioned people, and it mentions Egypt, uh, Israel kind of as a people group, not a nation or a city state. So those things are kind of important. The Philistines, uh, so the Philistines go back there up in Egypt, Crete, that area, and for various reasons they have to get out of that area. And they go, they're called the people of the sea. And um, they go by ship and they attack Egypt. And they actually win some stuff. But over time, Egypt kind of forces them out and they kind of move up the, the <coughs> east side of the Mediterranean into what we now would call the Gaza Strip in current uh, terminology. So the Philistines were pretty powerful. They are advanced, especially metal, metallurgy. They knew how to mine, uh, they knew how to smelt iron. They knew how to build iron chariot wheels. And so they were, they were pretty powerful. Okay, so <clears throat> a little genealogy also. So this is uh, the land of judges. Um, be just before the conquest. And, you know, you see a lot of different maps and they're all slightly different. I like this one, so I use it. Uh, but it shows this area kind of, this would be Canaan, there's the Philistines, and we have Edom and Moab and Ammonites and Ammon. So up here's the Phoenicians, we don't really talk about them. Phoenicians were actually Canaanites also, but right from the beginning, the Israelites and the Phoenicians had a kind of a, you know, good relationship. You know, the, the cedars of, of uh, Lebanon, that's that area. We were always using, they had always had a good relationship with the Phoenicians. So, okay, so, <clears throat> but let's talk a little bit about the Canaanites. As I mentioned, so the Canaanites actually are uh, descendants of Noah through Ham, through the grandson Cain. And so we've got all these other groups that are mentioned in Judges. They are all, if you will, people groups different of the Canaanites, and they live in various areas along them. The Hittites, who were a powerful nation way up here, 
Um, but they still were Canaanites from the beginning. A remnant of them still exist, and they were existed here in um, in Canaan. So then you have the Moabites and the Ammonites, and those are, if we'll remember, it's important. You get all these countries, you hear about this stuff, and you read all these things in Genesis, and you wonder, oh, this is all great, but it, it makes sense. I mean, the Moabites and the Ammonites, Moab and Ammon, were the siblings of Lot's daughters who had sexual relations with their dad, got him drunk, and that's the start of those two nations. We also have the Edomites, which are descendants of Esau. Uh, the Midianites, Midianites, yeah, Midianites, are actually descendants of Abraham. I was trying to, I was trying to look at all this genealogy stuff and see where it was exactly, but I didn't. Uh, we have Amalekites, and they're only mentioned in Judges. They really were back in Joshua, who was the first people group that Israel had little battles with. They're kind of in the south area down. What's that? Aaron and Hur, the story is the Amalekites. Yes. Hold the arms up. Okay. Uh, and then, of course, we have the Philistines. And the Philistines are actually descendants of Noah, uh, sons of Ham. But they have, they're in a different lineage than uh, these. They're through the other, another son of uh, Ham. Okay, so this is, uh, I use this slide when we're talking about Joshua, but at the end of the conquest, so uh, you remember Israel had already taken kind of possession of this part of the land, but then uh, when they get over into the promised land and these, peop these uh, tribes say, yep, we'll go fight too. So the men go and they fight. And at, at, in 1401, which is when Joshua then divides up all this land between the nine and a half tribes, because Manasseh already had part of some land, um, that happened then. Uh, also, Cable got a, uh, his own spot that he had asked for. Remember, he and uh, Joshua had gone to the promised land and scouted out, and they were right and others were wrong. Uh, they set up ref cities of refuge, set separate cities for the Levites, and the tabernacle uh, got set up in Shiloh for 300 years or so. Okay, so much for the... Anybody have any questions about that? A little geography. Okay. Okay, it's important to understand that this all stuff fits together. You know, when you're reading your Bible, I would say, if you understand some of this stuff, it makes it a lot more interesting. Um, I'm not sure about kings, but uh, those genealogies kind of make me go to sleep. But <laughs> anyway, um, so <clears throat> let's talk about the book of Judges itself. So it's kind of divided up into three parts. Uh, part, the, the introduction and summary, first two chapters, a little bit of the third chapter. But the first chapter is kind of talking about Joshua and the conquest. And it really spells out in some detail all the major cities that they had not taken. Okay, so that's in there. Uh, chapter two is really like a high-level flyover of the rest of the book. Uh, so it's kind of... The cliff notes of the cliff notes. Uh, anyway, so that's, that's there. Um, the major part of the book is dealing with the judges. And we'll talk about this at, you know, as we get into this later, but not today. But there are really six major judges that, cut, that consume this. And the reason they're called major judges is because they take up a lot more ink. It's not that they were more major than the others. They just take up a lot more space, uh, and their stories do. There's some that just have, you know, one verse. But uh, so the majority of the book, 3 through 17, is all about the judges. And then the last few chapters, kind of the epilogue, uh, I think some of the bloodiest parts is like, ugh, why would, anyway. It's, uh, 
it's really showing how debauched the Israelites had become. It was just, it's just bad. It, it, it's, it's bad, it's bad, and they haven't learned their lesson, but it ends up leading to a uh, civil war in, in, uh, in, the, in the land of Canaan. Okay, <clears throat> so, like I said, so I think, you know, Judges is certainly a tragic sequel to Joshua. In Joshua, the people obeyed God and things went well. In Judges, they disobeyed God, things went bad. I mean, that's all there is to it. Um, the, I, I already said the name is based on, uh, you know, the Hebrew word deliverer or savior. I don't talk about that again. But um, the author, we don't know who the author is. Um, but the Talmud and a lot, most scholars think it was probably Samuel. We don't really know for sure, but it, it, a lot of things kind of fit that it would be Samuel. Because, you know, one of the purposes that it would be used, why he would be pinning this, was that he is, Saul's the new king, and he's trying to let Saul know, hey, this is how things have gone bad in our history, and we don't want to repeat these things. So that's a good reason why Saul, you know, Samuel would have been writing this. Uh, makes sense to me. Um, I don't think it really makes a lot of difference, but um, we already talked about us about 300 years, and I say 300 plus because there's, uh, if you take the various judges and what it says, how long they were being oppressed, then how long, you know, their victory, then how long they were at peace. So when they add all those times together, they get like 400 years. Well, the fact is, a lot of these judges were concurrent with each other. So there's a lot of overlap. How much overlap? I'm not sure. Probably it's 300, more than 300 years for sure. Um, okay, I saw you said it was probably written during Paul's, I mean, Saul's rule. Um, it, it's thematic rather than chronological. So... Uh, I like chronology. I like chronology, but it's not. I mean, it, it's it's got kind of just laying out things and like some of the examples of the judges. It's kind of got from a, it, a kind of an okay judge to a little worse judge, to a bad judge, and, and and if it's laid out timeline wise, it didn't it didn't happen that way. So it's more thematic than um, than chronological. Um, so uh, I think the, like I said, the foremost theme here is God's you know, covenant mercy. He's, God is continuously wanting to save his people, and they just continue to screw up. But um, so in, in the main part of the book, it really goes into a lot of detail about kind of seven of these historical per periods, and that's kind of a lot of the stuff we'll be covering in the next couple of weeks. Oh, my goodness. Good thing I'm getting near the end here. All right. Um, so some of the things that were a problem uh, with, with the, uh, the Israelites, there, there were basic reasons why they were, were in trouble. Um, they, they just, they failed to drive out. We talked about this. They failed to drive out um, the Canaanites. Uh, they, they adopted their idolatry, they intermarried, they disobeyed the judges and sometimes um, uh, turned away from God as soon as the, the judge died. Um, the site I mentioned before is kind of, if you want to do it, you know, the pastor way, like how many, you know, five S's, um, which is, you know, cycle starts out with sin, goes to servitude, oppression, uh, goes to... What's that? We love alliteration. <laughs> I know. I, uh, so supplication or repentance, then deliverance, and th then they go to a period of peace, and in every time they just repeat the cycle. So, uh, okay. Um, 
Okay, I, there's, there's different uh, uh, oppression areas and there's different uh, judges that we'll talk about that are tied specifically to like Samson and the Philistines. Um, uh, yeah, you'll, you'll learn from our lesson. You know, I don't think Samson was his hero. <laughs> he was a pretty corrupt and immoral dude. Um, okay, here, real quick. So this is this timeline, and you'll see I've, I've got the various judges marked here, uh, but, uh, but you'll see a lot of them are stacked up here at the end, uh, and there's Ruth. So this is kind of the outline. I'm not going to go into that. Of, of the book, the stuff we're going to be covering uh, in the various um, uh, scripture references. But I want to cut, stop here with just this. So, because uh, I, I, it's covering this to era, so I wanted to talk a little bit just briefly about Ruth. So, Ruth versus the judges. So, Ruth takes place during the period of the judges. So, we have the judges. So, they were. David's a result of disobedience. Ruth was obedient. These are contrasting. She was good. Uh, uh, they had human leaders. Ruth followed the Spirit, followed God. God tried to do mercy. God's redeeming her plan. Uh, the, the cycle of human condition, I mean, it so fits today, this whole, you know, where we are today. There's that was the judges. Uh, Ruth kind of followed a straight and narrow path and did what God wanted. Uh, he got, she got favor. They got weakness. Uh, and uh, closing, so remember, Ruth is the great grandmother of David. She was a Gentile. She was a Moabite, um, and uh, she had favor with God. And she uh, she was obedient to Yahweh, the God of Israel. Right. Um, so her offsprings live to be the national king, David, and the eternal king, Jesus, all in her lineage. So next week we'll be talking about, we'll start digging into the judges themselves. Anybody have any questions? Yeah. Oh, okay. Hi, Frank. Oh, <laughs> Why? Why? Chapter one, did they cut the thumbs and toes off? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think they did that because that was, <coughs> was that Sunday. Well, that was that was so you. It, it was pretty hard to walk and amble around and do things if you lost it's your like thumbs and your toe. Your it's it's like putting shackles on you. The enemy? Is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. So the enemy couldn't rally against you because if you don't yeah. have toes, big toes, it's hard to run. Yeah. It's kind of like putting shackles on or, or, a, uh, or one of those electronic uh, bracelets or what do you call it, ankle bracelets. Uh, anyway, anybody else? Okay, well, uh, dear Lord, thank you very much for this time. Uh, bless the service about to begin. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.